Lens standards are changing. Advances in camera performance and soaring creative ideals demand a new approach to lens technology. Lenses must evolve to remain ahead of the curve. With a clear vision of cameras of the future, Sony now redefines the lens. G Master. Overwhelming resolution that far exceeds my imagination. This lens tells a story with power and surprises me on every level. Unbelievably sharp still images and 4K video. It's a new level of clarity, even in the dark. 50 lines per millimeter is the baseline for the G Master, and overwhelming resolution measures up to the continuing evolution of camera bodies. It's bokeh with quality that speaks to the heart. It's really expanded my artistry. Bokeh is so sophisticated that it unleashes potential for expression unlike any I've ever witnessed. It has exceeded my demands as a professional 150%. Express yourself like never before with spectacular bokeh that only 0.01 micron accuracy delivers. Experience new imaging with spectacular resolution and brilliant bokeh. Tomorrow's lenses today from Sony G Master. In the wedding industry, everything happens so fast that sometimes light control is sacrificed in exchange for capturing the moment. The beauty of A7R Mark III's dynamic range is that it is so wide that even if the image is not exposed properly, the shadows can easily be brought out and the highlights controlled in post. Sony's sensor technology drastically changed my shooting and lighting style. It has made creating images so much easier and efficient. I am Jiggy Alejandrino and I am a wedding photographer. Hello everyone! Good evening Philippines! We're live and alive here at the first ever Sony Alpha Digital Learning Program. My name is Nigel Ian Laksamana and I am an advertising photographer and a Sony product expert. Before I start, on behalf of the Sony family, we wish that everyone is safe and healthy, both physical and online. And for those who are already started shooting, please continue to be safe. Wear your face mask and wear your face shields. And you know, better safe than sorry. Okay, so what is this Sony Alpha Digital Learning Program? It's actually gonna be a series of live shows that aims to help us appreciate the Sony system more and you know, upgrade our photography skills using techniques we can use at home. Some episodes are gonna be product demonstrations, some are gonna be live lectures, some are gonna be live demonstrations. Okay, so I won't take much of this time and uh, good evening again to everyone watching this live broadcast. For the first episode of the Sony Alpha Digital Learning Program, I would like to welcome, of course, a very good wedding photographer and friend of mine and a Sony Alpha professional, Mr. Jiggy Alejandrino. Hi, Jigs. Hi, Good nice. evening. Okay, so now... How are you holding up? Well, we can finally breathe because, of course, there's a lot of pressure doing this for the first time. And uh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope everybody enjoys what we have in store for them today. So how are you? Yes. 
I'm good. Uh, already shooting from I think a month now, and healthy. So I wish you and your family are healthy as well. Good to hear. That's good to hear. Well, I personally haven't really gone out since the start of the quarantine. That's why I believe this topic that we're going to be doing today will be perfect for all those other photographers too that still don't have the guts to go out or don't really need to go out yet and we'll show how they can do things at home, correct? Yeah, speaking of topic, well, what are we expecting tonight, um, Jigs? Well, we are doing a home-based photography studio, the cheapest possible setup that you can do. Uh, we're going to be using one Sony Speedlight and a bunch of little stuff, we'll, we'll, which we'll be explaining later. Okay, I just got to breathe. I'm sorry, but um, just a slight tidbit, a uh, slight <laughs> point to what we're doing here is that um, how long did we put this together, Nige? About a week of sleepless nights uh, of trying to figure out all the tech and everything <laughs> for this one. So it's, uh, I just need a few minutes to settle down so that we can, we can continue onwards. Or maybe we could talk about the equipment already. What do you think? Yes, actually, I, I was as I, I was about to ask. So you're doing a, a home-based yes. photo studio. What do you have in your setup okay, there? So actually, it's hidden now. I will show you. I'll make my baby boy smaller now. Hi, baby boy. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so first things first. Yeah. Okay. okay. For a home-based photography studio, you need a backdrop. Um, though it is not essential, you could always just have a white backdrop or a white wall to use as your backdrop. Or if you want to shoot black, uh, if you want to shoot with a black background, all you have to do is put the subject away from the from the background to be able to get pitch black. But we have something like this. Let me see. I'll bring it in frame. Sorry, you can't see me yet. There. This is my portable backdrop. This is black and white. It's foldable. It's like your big reflectors. It's about the size of your big reflector. And uh, we're gonna put it here now, and this one will serve for our backdrop for today. Okay. Yeah. So are you gonna use a uh, black backdrop no, all the way for tonight? No, uh, we're gonna use both black and white. So we're gonna be doing two layouts. Um, the first one will be a black layout, a, a darker one, a very moody one, and another one, we're gonna teach them how to shoot really bright and very, how do you call it, uh, airy. Um, portraits okay so next what's 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 the flash are you going to use one, of course wait let me get my trigger so today we're going to be using the sony remote commander i think the the model number of this one is wrc um we'll put it in the link all right, but I always call it my Sony Remote <laughs> Commander. It's, you know, or call it the Sony Commander. Yeah, it's called the Sony Commander. We, we, we call it the Except Sony Commander, yeah. there is yeah. a code for it. It's WRC something something, but I always tend to forget. I'm sorry, Sony. I'm sorry, guys. I just call it my Sony Remote <laughs> Commander. But this one, I know. I, I just call it the Sony yeah, Commander, yeah. I call yeah. it my Sony Commander. So this one remotely connects to this flash. Today, we're going to be using the top of the line, the flagship flash of Sony. Which is, the, which is the F60 RM. See, this one I know, I know the model of this one. The F60 RM is the, one of the, well, the, the flagship model of Sony. And one thing I like about it is that it does this. I call it my transformers. So any, any way you want to <laughs> shoot, you can actually, you could move the flash head any direction you want, okay? So with that in mind, we also have the A7R Mark III, which will be my shooting camera. And then I will have the 85 1.4 GM and the 24 to 70 GM for my lenses today. Obviously, we're using the 85 because we're going to be doing a bunch of portraits, and the 85 is the best portrait lens there is for Sony, and the 24 to 70 just so that we can do some wider shots in this particular area. Oh, and another thing, Nige. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a, I have a black mat here on the floor. This actually represents the area that I will be using today. This is six one meter by one meter mats. So basically this entire studio will fit in two by three meters. Okay, next. Uh, oh, okay. Ask me what modifier I'm gonna be using. Okay, there you go. <laughs> what? There you go, there you go. I asked them, okay, go. so what modifier do you want me to use? They told me, 
one of the cheapest modifiers you can find so that people can start using it with, our, with the Sony Flash. And what's cheaper than a five and one reflector, right? So yeah. this one. Yep. Actually, this, this is the purpose of, of yes. what we're doing, uh, this series of broadcasts. You know, these are, these are professional looking images shot at home. Yes. And this is actually Jiggy's yes, home yes. studio. And the challenge for all of us that Sony gave us is you cannot use a lot yeah, of you know, you know, equipment. As much as I Just want, what the photographers I have all my use. big modifiers here. We could attach it to our, to our Sony flash and just create small, uh, beautiful soft light. But then that would be cheating because then you'd have to use all those big modifiers. Well, it's not really cheating, but it's not applicable to everyone that wants to start off their photography career. Correct, Nige? So I know. So we're going to use this one. See, this is the five in one reflector. And what we're going to really be using is what's inside. So it's called five in one because it's got a white side, a silver side, a gold side, and a black side. But we're going to put this aside first and use just this one. This is the diffuser panel inside a five in one reflector. Now, it comes with a handle so that you could hold on to it. But for the purpose of this shoot, I don't want to have to hold on to it. You could always ask your little brother or sister to do it for you. But I will be putting it on my reflector holder here. Okay? So this one will serve as our main modifier. Wait. There we go. OK. So uh, before we, we move on, Jigs, and while you're setting up, I'm, I, have, I, want to greet some, I want to greet some of the people watching us right now. OK. Uh, okay while you're doing uh, that, I'll grab something. Dom. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Dom Bailas is watching from MPU. We got uh, Sheng. Sheng Gonzalez, a very fantastic uh, uh, toy photographer. Hello, Sheng. Good evening. We have Mr. Ibarra Derry, of course. Hello. Um, and then we also have some comments here of audio po, walang boses. Okay, everyone, we suggest that you put on your headphones because we're broadcasting on stereo. Okay, so it's better for for you to use headphones so you can understand us uh, better. And our good friend, Glenn Lopez, is watching. Hi, Glenn. You're not streaming, sorry, you're watching. Nice. Huh? Uh, Thank you for this. What's problem with audio? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think some of us can't hear uh, what we are broadcasting, but as far as my, my other computer here is set up, uh, I'm, I'm totally OK. okay. So uh, I suggest that uh, it's probably the, the phone, the mobile phone that they're oh, using yeah. or their laptop. So I highly suggest you stick your headphones like this one so you can hear us uh, properly. Sir so Jim Baltasar is also watching yeah. from so CMB. Glenn's watching. You got to say hi to Glenn. Yes. Thank you also for some of the technical support you gave <laughs> me within this, this week. You know, the guy was trying to, has been avoiding my calls already because every time I'd call him, how am I supposed to do this and do that? <laughs> <laughs> the little challenges. Yeah. We, anyway, we, yeah. These are the little challenges that we, we actually have to face during this, this troubled times that we're facing. But it's also a nice welcome challenge because I enjoy learning how to do new things. Exactly. Right? So, and not, not, not only that, it's, it's nice to have a live show because we can interact oh, yeah. with with uh, the audience. Yes. So yes. We, we, and we encourage everyone that if you have uh, questions, oops, uh, I'm having a little problem here. Probably my camera. Okay. So while you're at it, Nige, I want to explain to the guys watching that um, throughout this entire process, this is why we had so many sleepless nights. It's because this is live, and I want to show you and bring you immersely into what I am shooting. So today, the process that we're going to be doing is that we will have um, some guys also. Wait, what happened to Nige? Nige, are you still there? Yep. Okay. Yep. So Just uh, fixing so, my camera. I'm here. Um, man. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I think we're good. And I think we can start now. But before that, we can actually put in our surprise, Nige. Okay. Yes, uh, we can actually, we not, it's not just the you and yes. me right there. now. We have a couple of uh, poggy guests. Okay, right, I, I'm back. All right, wait, I still can't uh, I'm see just going to put on my, I'm back. Yeah. 
<laughs> there. there we go. There so we go. let okay. me introduce the the fine gentleman that we have right now. First of all, from Sony Mirrorless Users Group Philippines Smog, Mr. Mel Bakani. Hi, Mel. How are you holding up? Um, excuse me for a while, huh? Just a moment. <laughs> Yeah, Mel, hello? Are you there? Good evening, everyone. Magandang gabi po. All right. Philippines. Okay, yes. and uh, uh, how are you doing this uh, quarantine season? Is the group active? Uh, yes, very active. But some are, you know, some are their own photography. So, okay lang. All right, Yo. nice to see you, uh, Mel. And nice. of course, and everyone. we have uh, Mark, MDP of uh, M uh, Mirrorless United Philippines. Hello, Mark. Hi, good evening. I, I really like your hair, Mark. I'm sorry. I've, I've been keeping up for about an hour, but you know, you have, you have fantastic uh, quarantine uh, hair. <laughs> quarantine hair, yeah. Okay, sorry about and that. And then, uh, how's uh, I was just checking on our Mirrorless model. United Philippines? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How's, okay, the, how's your group? Marami na nagpo-post mga quarantine shooters. Yeah, and then of course, uh, Mr. Dino Gingona of Creative Photographers Group. Hi, Dino. Hello, hello. Thanks for having uh, me. Thank you so much. How are you? Family. How are you and how is the group? I'm good. Uh, TCP, the, the creative photographer, has never been this active. Uh, uh, I, I, I guess not by choice, but uh, the quarantine really uh, made us concentrate more on, on the craft. And, you know, everybody's into social media these days. So this is a great event tonight that uh, uh, Sony is is holding. Congratulations! Yeah. Thank thank that Dino. And actually, I I agree with uh, everyone that you said. Parang suddenly everyone becomes more active right now. Number one, probably because we don't have to do and we just have to shoot at home. That's why we appreciate Sony for putting this together, this digital learning program. The catch here, because is not you know, these are the techniques you can use at home, in which after this. This session, uh, Jiggy can actually, you know, you can, you can start doing it at home well, after this, this they workshop. Sh they should be able to, or else I don't think I did my job well. That's a challenge for me now. It's like, yeah. it's a, it should inspire, or I'm hoping it inspires photographers to actually try this at home, that you don't really need all those expensive setups just to be able to get good portraits. Plus, you have the best subjects in your house. You don't have to look for models. You don't have, well, of course, given that you're married or you have your family with you at home, um, which is the case today, we're gonna be shooting my wife. So um, it's the best way for you guys to practice. Yes. Yeah, before we, we start this, actually we have a lot of, uh, some comments. Um, yes. Jigs, you need to increase your mic volume, please. Uh, that's already my max as you're, of you're, um, I think you can just a little bit on your input or maybe just talk yeah, louder. I'll probably just talk and louder. Then, How about now? Is it better? Yeah. Uh, yeah, mahina daw. Audio ni Sir Jiggy. Okay, let according me see to, what I can do, okay? Yeah, well, while you do your, your thing, I'm going to greet some people. Um, we have, we have Ross Tejero. How about now? How's my audio now? And is then we have... Uh, well, the, the the thing is, from from our hearing, you are loud, but of course, it's different on the broadcast. Okay. But how's in, in terms and of your then, speech, Nige, uh, maybe I'll just uh, increase my voice. We were, I think, we're having some technical difficulties with my mic. So if you guys are, if you guys don't mind, I'll I'll just speak louder as if I was speaking to a crowd without any microphone. Would that be okay? Yeah. Or. Yeah, Jigs. Or one, one last try. I mean, this is live, and uh, to we want the audience to enjoy what okay. you're saying. You can increase your uh, mic uh, microphone uh, on on Skype, probably. Uh, I already. Did. But uh, I already did. Yeah, but uh, for 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 our, our audience, we highly suggest that you use your headphones. 
audience can already say that okay the audio is good if you wear headphones so we're pro- broadcasting on stereo so make sure that uh, you use your headphones better now all right let me see hopefully okay. it's, no, it's better saying if they're on earphones we're good yep okay. and then uh, last greeting before we start jigs we have uh Adrian Manapil from CDO. Oh, fantastic. So we have a viewer from oh, Yeah, you know, I had, I had or, such no. an amazing experience in CDO. Um, Sony finally brought us there. I think that was a year or two ago and it is one of the one of the one of my favorite workshops. I really and I really enjoyed doing that workshop in CDO. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so let's audio. start. Jake, good, good. What's your? Right, so no, but before anything it's good else, on my um, side. What's your first? Guys, setup? the reason why these three are here, Mel, Mark, and Dino, is that we will course all your questions through them. So, um, in the respective communities in which they shared, I hope you guys can post all your questions so that Mark, Dino, and uh, Mel can relay it to us, and we can answer it um, while we are doing the shoot. Um, and guys, uh, the three of you, obviously, when uh, the four of you, when we're shooting, I don't mind if you want to interrupt me, if you want questions, if you want to ask questions of what I am doing, uh, let's do that. Let's try to make it as, um, as uh, entertaining or as, um, what's the term for it? As interactive as Engaging. possible. Engaging. There we go. Sorry. My mind's, still, my mind's still a little bit off because of all the, this is, this is so much <laughs> pressure now. <laughs> And to think mm. you're supposed to be used to this, right? But it's different when you're doing it yourself, and yeah. Okay, and you're, you have the name of Sony with you. And I am just waiting for my model, and I think she's going to be okay now. Perfect. Okay, so. Now, before you enter, baby, it's fine. So what's, what's the first, what's the first yeah. setup, uh, Jake? Okay. Uh, so can you first setup, tell us? Okay. I said earlier, is that it's the, the best way to get yourself comfortable whenever you're shooting is you find that one light that creates always beautiful images. So the first one that we're, that we're gonna do today is called the beauty light. So it is called the beauty light for a reason. Sorry. It's called beauty light for a reason because it makes everyone beautiful, but technically it's known as the clam lighting. So what are we gonna do? This modifier that we're using, this is a diffuser. It's, it's supposed to make this flash unit a bigger light source because the, one of the basic principles of light is that the smaller the light source, the harsher the light, which is very unflattering when it comes to shooting women. And obviously right now we're gonna be shooting my wife, so I wanna make her look as beautiful as possible. So we have to be able to make this light source big and that is the purpose of this diffuser here. Now. With clam lighting, it, its basis is actually from, called it, uh, the basis of this one is from the butterfly lighting of old. That is actually one of the favorite lighting setups from the old school photographers, and most Hollywood actresses love that type of light. So we'll start off with that one first, the butterfly light, because that's the, that's the basic premise of that. So we'll have our diffuser here and our flash now, turn it on, sync everything here. We'll put it up and center and tilt it down. Okay, there we go. So while my model's still getting ready, I'll go through the settings of the camera. All right, so here. Basically, the first thing that we need to do is we have to ask ourselves, do we want to include ambient light or not? So in this particular case, I want all my light coming from my flash. So I have to set first my ambient exposure. So my camera is set on manual. My ISO is at 100. And then I want to ask myself if I'm gonna shoot at 1.4, or stop down to make it sharper. So I'll probably stop down maybe about, oh, sorry. I will turn off first my, my live view effect will be turned on now so that you could see everything that's happening in my camera. Okay, perfect. 
there. So at this moment, when we take a shot, turn off live view effects so that you can take a shot. If you take a shot now, that's exactly what you're going to see. Nothing. Okay? So if I turn on my flash, this is what's going to happen. Obvi automatically, live view effects will be turned off because if you don't, if the live view effect is not turned off, then you won't be able to see what you're shooting, such as this one. All right? Okay, so then, are you ready, babe? So can you come in? So we'll build this up. My flash settings now, okay. Everyone say hello to my wife. Thank you very much for doing this, okay? Um, so my flash settings now, wait, we'll set our composition first before we do anything. Sorry. Actually, yeah. Jigs, you introduce yes, your model. This is my wife, Coco. <laughs> there we go. I'm sure you guys who follow me are Hi, familiar Coco. with her face already. There. Yeah. Okay, I'll just move it back. Hi, Coco. Good evening. Th thank you for doing Say this with us. Hello, everyone. Ready? Um, that is. I'll introduce you to your panel first. That's Mel, you've met Mel. Dino, you've met already, and Mark also, okay? And Nigel, of course, okay? All right, so, so this is what I am actually seeing now, okay? Now, let's start with this one like this. But as you can see, I am getting, I should actually be shooting this vertical, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm shooting it horizontal just so that you guys won't get, um, you won't get dizzy trying to, trying to look at the image that I'm creating. But so take it, as a, take it as if I was shooting it vertical mode, right? Because it's a portrait photograph, right, Nigel? Portrait should be yes, portrait sir. orientation, correct? Yes, <laughs> yes, because if you landscape, ka, that's a landscape okay, photograph. So let's take a shot again without flash. Let us see how it turns out. So look at this now. Without flash, we are still getting some ambient light because we put our subject in already now. So we'll stop down there at 5.6. So my settings now, as you can see, there is 1 over 250, 5.6 ISO 100. So let's start off with, then let's turn on our flash. Then set our flash power. So maybe one is to one is too strong. We'll start first at one over eight. How's the audio, guys? If there's any problem with the audio, let me know so that I, I know if I'm going to be shouting. Okay, so let's take one. Okay, yes. Jigs, I have a yes, question first. Uh, I mean, not, not everyone are familiar with uh, the Sony Flash okay. system. So um, for those of you who are not familiar, actually, if you connect the, the Sony Flash, you sort of commander, it, uh, another part of the menu shows up. Th that's what you see on Jig's yes. screen. Can you set up yeah, uh, Jig's? You know, this is funny, right? When, I was, when this was first introduced to me, sorry. When this was first introduced to me, I was like, okay, so why will I use that when I could just use the, the controls here on top? And I realized after using it, it's so much easier just doing it. You just have to set a... You just have to set a, a button, a custom function button, and then all your flash settings are there for you to just uh, adjust anytime. And only the Sony system exactly. allows you to do this. Uh, exactly, and actually, this is this is the beauty of of the Sony system. I mean, uh, this is an ecosystem we are talking about. It's not just you know you use a flash and then. Just use the hardware to navigate yeah. your settings. But uh, if you actually dive into the menu and you connect this ecosystem of yours, this flash system, you can actually have an additional menu. The same menu settings you will found on the flash is what you will see also okay. on the camera. You know, right, Jake? It's funny, Nigel, now that you brought it up, no? Because there's always going to be a constant debate about the menu system of Sony. Guys, honestly, it is so simple, it's so advanced that you could do everything that you, if you could set it exactly the way you want to, that's how they built it. They, they made it so adaptive so that every photographer with their own quirks and all their needs can actually fix their camera to their liking. Don't you agree? 
Yeah, so it's uh, it's not just you know the hardware; it's a yeah. whole system. It's like an an Android system on its own. Agree, agree. <laughs> anyway, agree. Uh, for that, no, no I just problem, I just no need Thank to, you very to much put it out. Yeah. Me. It's a, it's a, if I forget something, that's why you're there. It's perfect. I I love it. I really love it. Okay, so we're shooting now. We'll put you on live view mode. So. Whenever you're posting, the, well, uh, my wife Coco here is very familiar already with, uh, with my shooting style, but you always have to make them feel comfortable the moment they get in front of the camera. So normally, if it's the first time, babe, excuse me, if it's the first time, you have to look first at the angle in which you want to shoot. Whether, even if you're shooting it with overhead light, you still have to angle that person. So when you make her sit down, you already make her sit down facing the angle that she likes, which Coco will do now. So she never, she'll never sit down face, facing towards the camera. Because if, it fit, if she faces towards the camera, you're gonna make the, the body bigger. It's very good if you want to look masculine, but for a woman, you don't want her to be facing frontal towards the camera because she will look wider, even though my wife is already so thin. All right, so next. We take a test shot now, all right? Okay, babe, perfect. Look at that IAF knives, don't you think? So we'll take a test shot. So right now, are we overexposed or underexposed? We're overexposed. So since we're overexposed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop down. Instead of touching the most common mistake, sorry, the most common mistake of a lot of photographers when they first start with flash is that they adjust their aperture, shutter speed, their ISO if they see that the image is overexposed. When in which case, you should actually be adjusting your flash power. So here, I set my flash on group A. I'll bring it down maybe to 1 16th power and let's see where that turn, that gives, what this light gives us, babe. Can you look here? Good, but you can look at me straight first after. You just angle your body. Good, there we go. All right, so now I feel that the light is still a bit too high, so I can bring this down. That's the beauty actually of this one. And we are now underexposed. So again, we're gonna dive into the system. We're gonna make it stronger, maybe one fourth. All right, okay, look at me. Very nice, so from there, we're already getting more or less a good light on her face. But this was, if I really want to push this one, I'd actually make her go chin up, babe. Chin up some more, go look towards the light, yeah. So that's a type of light, oh sorry, she blinked. I think we're still overexposed a bit. Maybe we can bring it down, okay. All right. There. Now, my issue with this one is that I don't like the shadows underneath her face, as you can see. So, remember the thing that we took out from our modifier earlier? This one? We can now put it to good use because it can give us a very good uh, reflection of this light to be able to fill in the shadows here. So, you have both the silver and the white. The silver adds more specularity. So We'll actually try the silver first, and now you can have your model hold it like this. All right, very nice, perfect. You can bring it up higher some more, there. You guys are seeing that it is already filling in the shadows below her. Can you look at me straight now? And we can increase, actually, it's okay already here. Or am I, oh, that's why. Sorry, I'm monitoring from my phone, so that's why. Um, Nige? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm monitoring over my phone, so I can't see the proper exposure that well. I'm just gonna base it here. How is the exposure of that last shot? From what you guys, from what you see? I think just just that that underexposed, but everything else is, right? but we're is there, okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So 
Yep. I was at so one far, yep. fourth earlier, one fourth and three and three quarters. So I'll just bring it back to one fourth. Bring up the there we go. Babe, body this way, and then profile back. Good. There we go. Very nice. There. See. Oh, that's why. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry. Okay. There's one thing that I have set in my menu system. Um, that is something that you should be turning off every time you're shooting in the studio. And that is your DRO. I have my DRO set. That's why you guys will see that when that's you're why. shooting, all of a sudden it becomes brighter. DRO dynamic is optimized. dynamic range yeah. optimization. And I'm trying to look for it. Usually I have it set already here. Sorry, guys. Yeah, uh, Jigs, as you put on your menu there, just again, some audio, not really issues, but uh, based on our earlier tests, it's a really Jiggy's microphone, uh, which is a little bit uh, uh, low on volume. So forgive us <laughs> for that. And um, I'd like to just reiterate Jigs, you know, if you have a Sony system, a flash system bought with you, we suggest that you upgrade your firmware because uh, what you see now on Jig's interface okay. is you can actually control your flash from your Sony menu. So no need for, you know, moving up to the to the flash and then yeah, controlling sorry, it I from there. My, my mic is auto-adjusting for, for one reason or another. That's why I have to speak really loud in order for you, for us, for you to hear me. So, okay, so let's go back. I was able to take out DRO already. Okay, all right. Let me be chin toward the chin there. Okay, IAF, you see it working, right? There we go. I think that's correct. So that's your standard beauty light. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jigs. Uh, if if uh, that's your final shot, I, no, I've got I a question here before I actually I'm sorry, the groups. I want okay. this a bit higher. Can you bring it up higher so that you can open the shadows more? Try to catch this light here that's coming. Okay. And still post. Imagine, so she's a model now, but at the same time, she's also she's also my lights man. She's an assistant. All right, thanks, babe. Profile a bit more. There, perfect, that's it. Open your mouth. There. There we go. I think that's the correct one. There. That I like. Okay. Okay. So yes, I agree. That's the last okay, here. Jigs, I'll, I'm gonna ask okay, the first. And let's go. You can relax first. Yeah, I'm gonna ask the first question first, and then we go to to Mel. Okay, we have a question from Mark Empedrado, okay. because a while ago we were a little bit overexposed, and then you adjusted the flash, and then you went uh, a little bit underexposed, and he asked, why not just adjust the shutter speed? Okay. So your shutter speed, it's depend. You have two kinds of shutter speed. You have your flash sync. Uh, sorry, you have two kinds of sync speeds. Your flash sync speed and your high speed sync. If you guys noticed my settings, I was already at one over two fifty, which is basically the maximum flash sync speed that my camera can handle without banding without um, bandings to appear. Bandings is basically um, your second shutter is already closing, then your flash will pop, therefore it's catching the actual shutter and you'll see a black line across your image. Then the next option is for you to go on high speed sync. The thing with high speed sync is that it's only available to high end flash units and high end triggers, which is what we have now. Um, and, it and it decreases the power of your flash. So one of the limitations of flash is the fact that it is battery powered. You want it to recycle as fast. You don't want to overpower your flash or to take too much charge away from your batteries. Also, again, you set your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO for your ambient light. The moment you start shooting with flash photography, it is the flash power and flash the subject distance that you will adjust. Meaning, if I am already at full power with my flash and it's still too weak, then I have no choice but to bring it closer, then it will be stronger. 
but in this case, I don't need to do that because I'm well within my power range. And the reason why I adjust my flash power is that I can adjust it stronger or weaker. That's basically it. So again, that it's a good it's a good thing that they, that that guy asked that question because we always take it for granted, especially with us, that, that we have been doing it for such a long time that we know automatically we will adjust the flash power if it's underexposed or overexposed. But a lot of newbie photographers who are just beginning to learn how to use flash, that is the first thing they do. The moment they see it under overexposed or underexposed. They touch shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, right? Okay. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I hope uh, we answered the question, Mark. Uh, okay, Mel, you have a question? Or er, from uh, Smog? Mel, you have a question? I don't think he can hear you. Okay, let's skip Mel. Yeah, let's, sorry uh, about that. My, so my, uh, anything, I'm sorry. I'm like shouting here inside the studio. But how is my audio coming in now, guys? If it's better, please message. Uh, please put it in the comments if it's better. And I'm probably killing Nigel's ears now because I'm like screaming and he's on the headphone. So it's probably louder in, on his end. I'm sorry about that, Nigel. Yes. Yeah, uh, based, based on comments, some uh, some of our viewers says that the audio is good. Okay, good. And some, of course, I, I'm, I'm too loud. So remember, uh, we're broadcasting on stereo. And we apologize if some smartphones are still on mono. So we'll do better next time, folks. Okay. Yes. But anyway, yes. Mel, your question. You're always the guinea pigs, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, question from the group. They're asking kung, uh, if you're going to start a studio, is it better for to start with speed light or strobe right away? Um, Advantage and disadvantage. Like for example, when you start with strobe, you're talking about power. When you start with speed light, you're talking about portability. But there, there's an advantage to using speed lights like the Sony speed lights that I can actually stop down and shoot at 1.4. Maybe later we'll shoot at 1.4. And my speed light can bring down the power that low for me to be able to shoot. And at the same time, when mm -hmm. I'm shooting, let's say with artificial light coming in, I can always stop it down and and um, excuse me and match the light properly. But of course, it's always good to have a studio strobe, a stronger one. Um, but I would recommend whatever it is that they are more comfortable using, or depending on their budget. Because I'll tell you this much: this small speed light, though the price is competitive to that of a studio strobe, will give you better output, more consistent output than a lot of those cheap studio lights. So I would suggest that if you're going to start with something and if you're going to learn something, you try to take away all the other aspects that could be giving you problems. What are the problems that I experienced before when I bought, when I bought uh, cheaper lights? I couldn't understand what was happening. I thought it was me when it ended up being the light. The light was inconsistent with the power that it gave. When I thought that I was already shooting, let's say, with this power at f8, then all of a sudden the next shot, it would be underexposed or overexposed. And I thought it was my issue when it was a problem of the equipment. So I suggest you okay. invest in good equipment to take away another intangible. Because then, especially when you're starting, palang, when you're still learning, it's very, very difficult for you to, to pinpoint what's going on. So at least you have something that's already dependable. Yon. Right. Okay. Susunod kami later. Yeah, yeah, oh, of thank course, you. Of course. Dino. Mm. By the way, we have another. Yes, event, uh, right? Gigi, I, I just meant, I meant to ask you, no? Uh, when you're shooting indoors, no? What is your preferred or, or recommended? Uh, white balance setting or, or do you choose to stay on you know, auto? You know, that's a good point because right now, I forgot to mention it earlier, my white balance as of now is set at 5600 Kelvin as you can see there. Okay. The reason why it's set as 5600 Kelvin is because I know that this flash will give me that range of color because it's daylight balance. Daylight balance is between 5000 to 5600 Kelvin. 
So to answer your question, the white balance is dependent on your prevailing ambient light. So again, why is this a 5600 Kelvin? Because that light over there is 5600 Kelvin. The light on top is 5600. All these video lights that we're using is 5600 Kelvin. So later, if I do decide to bring in the video lights as part of the scene and just supplement it with flash, it will create a seamless type of light. So that is very, very important. Your light color must match that of your white balance. And your white balance, again, but is also still subjective. Because all you have to do, you have to make sure that all your light colors are the same, and then you could play around with your white balance. If I want to make it warmer, I can make it warmer, and everything will be warmer. As compared to having, let's say, a warm light and a white light, you're going to have a, a hard time trying to make it look natural. Okay. Yeah. Jigs, can we see your output again? Oh, sorry. Yeah, but you can explain yes. the, the... There we go. Yeah, okay. There, there we go. Okay. Thanks, Dave, for doing it. Okay, let, let's go, Mark. Mark, you have a question from uh, uh, Mirrorless United yeah. Philippines? Uh, it's a question. Like, how to upgrade the firmware? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just go to the Sony website. Yeah, that's it. Go to the Sony website, download it, and trust me, read whatever is written there. Because there, just last night, I was updating the firmware of one of my flash units. I was like, I've, I've been so used to updating it because you just download and then everything just works for you. Then all of a sudden, for one particular flash, they put in another software, but it was written there in the instructions. So all they have to do is go to the Sony website, um, look for the link of the equipment that they're using, and then read the instructions before doing anything. That's the most important. Yeah, it's, it's all, all in the. Uh, yeah. It's it's basically and, uh, the model, of course. All right. Yeah, and what's what's with uh, the uh, the update? Thank you. As you've seen, as you've seen a while ago, when Jiggy actually changed the uh, the setting of the flash, he's not touching the flash at I'm all. Not. He's just you know going to the menu and then adjusting from and there. I'm not even, that guys, I'm not makes even us going our life. I set it as a custom button, so it goes direct. Oh, pretty already. So yeah. I just, it's just one button. So one button yeah. away. That's why I love yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question. Another question, Jigs. I'm gonna ask this on behalf of Mel and uh, Mel yes, United. Please. Okay. Yes. James Castaneda asks, "Can we replicate the same setup, the same effect, but with continuous?" Of course, of course you can, um, but. Generally, I will, well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if you're shooting with flash, your images are generally sharper than that of continuous light. That's, that's going to be the difference that you see. If you're shooting in continuous light, you can get the exact same uh, output except that your flash will be sharper. The, the one shot with flash will be sharper. Babe, is it okay if I zoom? You're okay? Look at how sharp this is. Let me show them. Look at how sharp that is. Wow. Okay, that's enough. And Sorry, that thank you very IAF much. I promise is, her I won't zoom, but thank you really very fantastic. much. I know she's going to kill me later for zooming that. <laughs> okay, Jigs, one last question. One yes. last question for this setup coming from Smug. Yes, uh, Jiggy. Question from Linus. Yes. Uh, when do you use a uh, mag mod and a softbox? Um, you see, even if I did use my, my mag mod diffuser, it will still not give me the softness of light that this thing is giving. Because that, that diffuser is still so small compared to this one. This one's huge. So it really depends on the output of light that you want. So if you mm -hmm. want it ultra soft, then you try to get the biggest light source that you can get. But if you don't have the space, then you have to make do with what you have and just sacrifice a little by maybe putting the light closer. But it re it's really dependent. Modifiers are there specifically for a given situation. It's, an, it's not like a one modifier for all type of, of scene. So, okay, Nige, um, before, before we get, I'm, I'm sure Thank there's going to be a lot more questions. I actually want to move on yep. and uh, do another set with this one before we actually um, 
shift to a white backdrop. Okay? Go. But, okay, no, but Go. I think I'm going to shift to white backdrop first with this light setup. Um, there's actually a, basic, a more basic lighting pattern, a uh, lighting setup, but uh, it's very, very simple to do. You just put it in the side, which we'll go through later. But look at how this one will look like if I decide to just turn the background around, put it a bit closer. Give her her reflector again. There you go. Thank you. Bring it up a bit, bit. Jiggy, gumag, gumag. This is the only time I've seen you commanding Coco. <laughs> no, that's true. And look, she's following. I've tried. I've tried. Na good ka ba Yeah, you know, I, I can feel it already. That anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> you look fantastic. You look amazing, of course, all the time. Okay, so can I have your body facing this way again? And then bring your face back and then bring the reflector in with you. Maybe just put your hand this way. No, not uh, just this one there, just to bring that. Okay, shoulder towards me some more. Okay, uh, guys, I'm going to show you guys what's happening when I'm posing her. Babe, can you give me straight on first? All right, look at how... Even though my wife is already so thin, look at how big she looks if she's straight on ID photo. Profile now to your right, perfect, at your left. Look at how slim, we're creating a base with her for her shoulders. Now can you drop your further shoulder, your left shoulder, drop it away. Drop it to, yeah, perfect. Chin towards camera now, good, there. Now this pose is a feminine pose that mostly it's actually good for slim people. Bring this one up. Chin's going here. Okay, perfect. There we go. All right. Okay, so our settings are still 5.6, 1 over 250, ISO 100, as you can see, and my flash is set at 1 fourth. All right. And then I am using my AF on here. I'll just show you guys. I'm using my AF on here in the back because if you can see, my settings is set to continuous focusing mode. The reason why I set it in continuous focusing mode is so that when I press AF on here in the back, it's set to track the subject's eye. Okay, there. So it automatically looks for the eye. Okay. Oh, sorry, babe, I forgot to tell you that I was shooting. Okay, can you bring up the modifier some more? Okay, there we go. Open your mouth, chin forward. There we go. So just by changing the background already, it gives you an entirely different looking image. Okay? So I'll shift it back to black. Okay, I'm gonna shift it back to black. Then this modifier, we're gonna bring it down. Set it here and do a lighting pattern that I like so much when I light the short side of the face. What do I mean by lighting the short side of the face? My wife's angle is her left side, so she will be facing here. And so if she's facing here, I will be lighting this side. I am shooting to the shadow here. Okay? So. I'll have my modifier here in the back so that my light will be coming here and just illuminating this side. I'll have her profile going here. So my flash I'll put it here behind. Okay. So again, let's take a test shot. Let's move the camera somewhere here. There we go. Can we have your body facing this way some more? Then profile back. Good. Or how about um, we do it the opposite? You face the light this time. Okay. 
then give me your shoulder. I'll shoot it from below. Normally, when you're shooting a when you're shooting a portrait, is the proper camera height should be that of face level or above for slimming. But I think with this particular pose, I want to give a bit of power. That's why I'm going to be shooting her from below. Um, I shot her now with an 85. I think I want to shift lenses. I'm going to shift to the 24 to 70, just so that I can get a wider shot. Pwedeng question muna. Go ahead, go ahead. While you're doing it, yeah. How a pure white, white oh. background? There's a question here. How can you create a pure white background? Later, we're going to do that. Thank and you. And we're going to create it with just one light. That's going to be the challenge. Yon, right? game. <laughs> so, let's shoot it with a 70. There we go. Um, again, I would suggest I would shoot this vertical, this particular layout. But since I don't want you guys to get helo, I'm gonna shoot it horizontal. Okay? So if by vertical I won't have that white part there, can I have your shoulder maybe this way? And then chin towards me. There, good. And then eyes going here. Nice. I like that. So let's see. Everything's still the same, but I think I need to change the power of my flash. Ooh, look at how dramatic that one turned out. But if you see this image here, okay, look at that. I actually want not uh, just a profile. So, I mean, the light not to just to be lighting the profile. I still want a bit of light on her face. So I will move the light a bit more. Beauty about, beauty, beautiful thing about this using a, sorry, a modifier like this is that I can change the position of the light. So unlike your normal softbox where it's always at center, using a speed light with a modifier like uh, with, just a, with just a diffuser, I can actually put my light somewhere here. So this is the, oh, sorry, I, you can't see pala. I'm gonna put my light somewhere here so that it's gonna be wrapping around her face a bit more, but still give me nice soft light. So it's here right there in the back. Perfect. Good. Okay. Let's see how this one will turn out. Okay, more shoulder, please. And then twist your neck towards me. There. Don't move your shoulder. Good. I like that. Perfect. Part your mouth just a little bit. Good. Oh, there we go. So now it becomes, since I'm shooting below, above, I'm giving her a more powerful pose. But I think I need to open up the shadows a bit on, on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be the one to hold on to the reflector, but I will put my camera here on timer, OK? All right, so you guys can see this is what, what's going to happen. I'll set it. Put it on timer, be the one to walk here, and basically reflect the light back. So look at that. It just opened up the shadows slightly. There. OK. So that's it. Of course, I'm in the shot, but this is meant to be shot vertical. But I think I actually like the one without the reflector more. What do you think? You like it better? All right. Nice. What do you guys think? What do you like better? This one or this one? The, it's more dramatic yung walang This one's more dramatic, Reflector. Right? Yes. But you know, hmm. But yeah. There. Okay. So I'm done with, with the black background. I'm going to be shifting to a white background. Are you still going to be changing? Oh, no more. Okay. So do we have any questions? Ano daw ang ano? Uh, butterfly lighting. Use it. That was, the first, uh, that was the first light that we did without the reflector. That's actually butterfly lighting. 
Um, yes. That uh, you use it for headshots, for portraits. Uh, it very it go- gives mm-hmm. very good glamour portraits. Though uh, feeling mm-hmm. ko may binabagayan lang yung ilaw na yon. Uh, kailangan medyo matangos okay. yung ilong mo para maganda yung light pattern. Basa it's a uh, all the lighting patterns that were fashion. Yeah, very, oh, oh. very. It ha- it's actually very Hollywoodish. It was, uh, it was really during the 1920s that that became very, mm-hmm. very popular. But to be honest, I don't see a lot of people using it now. Um, no, they'd rather do the clam with a, with a reflector underneath. Awesome, okay. man. Yeah. Okay, so while Jake is preparing the so no second questions. setup, nice. I'm gonna... Okay. So far, we're, we're good. We still have one more setup. Okay. And while you're doing your setup, I'm, I'm gonna actually post now uh, the updates of the of the flashes. So for for those who are asking how to update their Sony flashes, I posted uh, a comment now from Sony Philippines that uh, just click the link and it will help you uh, your flash units. And a couple of messages from our Sony friends. So we have an ongoing promo right now. So the first one is actually the R4, in which uh, this is uh, by current uh, camera that I use, it's currently less 15,000 pesos. And you get a free 64 gig SD card. And of course, uh, you have the 6100 and the RX100 Mark III. So new prices and, and some discounts and some promo bundles that you can see on your screens right now. Also, the lenses that Jiggy is using right now the 85 1.4 G Master and the 2470 G Master. These are the current SRPs. And I think these are, yeah, a confirmed 12 months, 0% interest installment. And for the accessories, if you want to upgrade your accessories or buy new Sony accessories, we have this microphone, the CG60 and the 45 RM at 10% off. So for those of you who want to upgrade your Sony gear, this season, so you can check out all the authorized retailers nationwide. So those are the from Sony that uh, we have. So we, I'd like to uh, greet again some of our viewers. Jiggy, some of our uh, Sony family KOLs are watching. I see Paco, I see Sino Pinas, I see Jerome Mascano watching. I'm glad, I'm glad that so hello. watching. I hope you guys are enjoying. How yeah. about you guys? Are you guys enjoying? <laughs> yes. I am. Good, good, good. I am. All right. So should we go now? Nice. So that's it. That is the promo. Yeah. Are you ready? What's the promo again? Yes, what's that's the, the promo. What's the promo? Uh, there's, okay, there's the, there's the okay. R4 promo, which is, the R4 promo is less 15,000 wow, okay. discount. And you, you get a 64 okay. gig SD card. And... This the Alpha 6100 and the RX100 Mark III have How much is bundles, the shooting How much is grips. The the Mark III now price is 32999. Wow, if I'm not mistaken. Um, for everyone watching, yeah. trust me, if you guys haven't used an RX series camera as your second as your portable travel camera, you're missing a lot. For me, that's the best travel camera. It's a, it's like my second camera. Right, it's a professional second camera when you don't want to bring around your big cameras. I always have my RX with me. Mm-hmm. Fantastic, fantastic, and it's not yeah. And then now, of right? the lenses that you're oh, using, yeah. yep, the lesson, the lenses that you're using, the 85 1.4 and the 24-70, at uh, 12 wow. months zero percent interest wow. installment makes it more affordable. And yeah. of course, ac- fantastic uh, accessories, right. yeah, the 45 RM and the CG60. Okay. Okay, so before you move on, Jake, I'd like to welcome everyone who's watching right now. This is Home Base Photo Studio, and this is the first episode of the Sony Alpha Digital Learning Program. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. With me is Jiggy Alejandrino, we have Mel Bacani, we have Mark, and then we have Dino from various photography groups Fantastic. in the Philippines. Second okay. setup, Mr. Second Jiggy setup. Alejandrino. What was the question, Mel? The uh, what question? Sorry, the the, How the previous are we one. How supposed to make the background white? Oh, the white. Okay, actually, white. You know what? Yes, I'll bring sorry you about guys that. Here, yeah. but uh, 
I can explain while talking oh. to you because it's so difficult not seeing your faces, and I would love seeing your faces. Okay, <laughs> what happened? So it's it's best that I explain it this way so that you understand and not just follow, so that um, when people decide that they want to try to emulate it, they actually understand what they're doing instead of just following it blindly. That's why when people ask me for settings of my camera for how I did this and did that. I always answer them and tell them that every single situation will be different. The most important thing for you to do is understand the principles behind it so that it's very easy for you guys to emulate. Okay, so what does the diffuser do? What happens to the light when it passes through a diffuser? It, um, it makes the light softer because it makes it into a bigger light source, correct? That's number one. But number yep. two, there is something that happens to it that you don't, you actually take for granted already. And that is the flash becomes or the light becomes weaker. Right? So if I have okay. a diffuser here, okay, then I have my flash. Again, my F60RM, my Sony F60RM. I'm going to show it to you guys here. Because when I put it behind, you won't be able to see it. If I mm -hmm. put my light in this general direction, part of it will actually pass through the diffuser, therefore making it softer and weaker. Another part of it will pass through it and hit the background full force. Okay? So by doing that, you are generally creating two lights from one light source, which you cannot do or will be very difficult to do if you are shooting with a softbox because you cannot control the direction of your flash. The most important thing is that your flash is set to its widest. And in this case, it's at 20 millimeter so that it gives a very big spread of light. So now, when I put it behind, I am actually aiming it towards the back and trying to get the proper exposure on, on Coco's face. So basically, my exposure will be here. So if I, if I, sorry, if I expose for her face, I will probably overexpose the backdrop, in theory. So let's see if it works, okay? So now we're back to shooting a standard portrait. I'll bring it up now about her eye level. And then I'll make her do a feminine pose in other words, facing away from the light and then tilting back to the high shoulder. There we go. Uh, can you open up your back shoulder a bit? Uh, back elbow, yeah, so that it drops that shoulder. And then lift that right shoulder up and then face towards the light. Good. There we go. Uh, lean forward, please. There. Perfect. All right. So you guys can see what I'm doing, right? Let's shift it here. Yes, sir. Okay, let's shift it. And I'm going to cross my fingers and see and hope that this works. Let's see. OK, flash power is set at 1 fourth. OK, and oops, it's still on timer. Sorry. OK, so it's underexposed, but you can already see it. Guys, you can already see what's happening, right? It's underexposed. So all I have to do is make my flash stronger, which we're going to do here. Sorry, there. Make it at full power. Okay. There we go. So now you've, got, you've gotten clean white backdrop with just one light and still maintaining her exposure. Now this time, I would actually suggest opening up the shadows. So we're gonna bring in the magic reflector again. Basically this is, so this, this particular reflector, we're using it um, for two purposes. One is to diffuse the light and the other one's really just to reflect the light. So again, I'm gonna put my camera on timer and be my own reflector holder, okay? So there, 
chin here, babe. Yeah, that's perfect. Bring your chin up. Uh, bring the shoulder up. Then look there. Good. There. Very nice. Beautiful. You know what? Chin down, maybe. Make it more. There. That's it. I like that. I know it won't. I don't think it's gonna match this pose. So chin up. There. Good. Good. Okay. And then I'll go in with the reflector. There, beautiful. So guys, I think I'm still a bit underexposed. But since I think I maxed out my power, I'll just open up a bit. There, sorry. All right, we'll take one more shot. And I think we should be good. There we go. Look at that. One light. Oops, overexposed. One last. A little bit. Okay, babe. Profile here again. Good. Shoulder more in there. Good. Perfect. Love that. Hold. All right. There we go. There. Kaya mo naman palang hawakan yung reflector eh. <laughs> so, there we go. See? One light giving you fantastic white background. And just because you know the principles of how to manipulate your light. In the end, everything that you're doing can be done with just one light. The most important thing is that you know how to manipulate light and understand the principles behind it. And I think I like it, baby. Like it? Thank you. I do. I do also. All right. So, mm. what's happening now? <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Question. question. Thank you. Yeah, you, I, that, that, you know, nice, questions. Let's start with Dino. Dino. It means I might have done a good job. Or pinagtitripan ka na lang namin sa aming private chat. So, are there uh, any, are there any uh, questions? Uh, our, but mine is uh, it's gear related, if sure, you don't mind. Okay. Uh, sabi mo kanina, I can ask anything. Okay. I, you, you know, I'm I'm in the um, I'm in the market for for good fast uh, telezoom, no. And obviously, the the 7200 the GM is so tempting, but. I find it too prohibitive. Man, what are your thoughts on the Tamron 7180? Sorry, yeah, I know it's not a Sony, but uh, it's a Sony mom. Okay. I don't like buying third-party lenses. Personally, okay. because I really believe that Sony developed their lenses for their camera and for their sensor. So if you're going to say it's prohibitive because of it, it's expensive, I will tell you this, if you buy that one lens, will you still be lusting over the 70 to 200 2.8? <laughs> yeah. right? Good point. So definitely Good point. you will still be lusting with, for that lens that you really want, which is that 70 to 200 2.8 GM. So instead of, waste, instead of spending your money for something that will just satisfy the now, or scratch that itch temporarily, you will end up losing money by doing that. Because when you finally have the budget to buy the 70 to 200, you will be selling that particular lens at a, at a loss. So why not just take advantage of the installment packages that Sony is probably going to be offering for the 70 to 200 2.8 also, and just spread it, spread it over a year or two, or two when you know for a fact that that lens will last you a lifetime. Well, not necessarily a lifetime, but it's going to last you way longer and you know that you're getting best value for money already or bang for your buck for me personally right i'm going to add this as well jigs but thank no, no you problem. anyway thank you i, 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 I can probably i can probably see <laughs> hi pearl i can probably see your reaction to that question <laughs> <laughs> pearl sorry yeah i just had no, to no, ask no no it's, oh, it's fine anyway. actually yeah even though this is sony sponsored we 
we really have to talk about all those other things just to understand right. where right. I'm coming from because I've uh-huh. never really used a third party lens. Um, no, I have, I've tested it and I see the difference. That's that's the thing. I see the difference, but to each his own. Yes, Nigel, you were gonna you were gonna follow up. Yeah, I'm gonna add to that, uh, Dino. Okay, I've been mentioning a while ago that uh, what Sony's been doing for the past decade is it's not just building cameras or lenses or accessories just for the sake of having these products. It's actually building an ecosystem, ecosystem that will work flawlessly and complementary with each other, whether it's a flash or a lens or, or a camera. Oh, hi, Coco. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, babe. Thank you for joining us, Coco. I know what will happen later. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay, go, go, go. Good luck, GK. <laughs> Wait, nice. Is it going to be me or anyway, somebody else? Yeah. Let's see. All right. <laughs> so you're saying. Okay. <laughs> okay, you, you got me at that, Jakes. Anyway, it's just, you know, Sony is building an ecosystem that will work flawlessly with all of this, with all of the, the different components. So right now, for example, we've been mentioning that the flashes uh, have an update and that f- update will work on uh, the bodies. So unfortunately, that update will not work on the third party um, accessories. So how can you control, how can you make your life easier uh, for example, what Jiggy's been doing, controlling the flash settings on the menu system or with one button, that you cannot do on some of the third-party pl- uh, flashes. And as well with some accessories, uh, Dino, or uh, lenses. Uh, for example, in the near future, um, a couple of third-party brands that can't follow up with the real, uh, real-time real IAF. And sayang naman if you have this fantastic body and the lens can keep up with the, the technology that Sony is putting out. Oh, so just my two cents. Yeah, and I'm gonna add I'm gonna add to that. No, it's a fantastic point that you made, Nige. And also color. Trust me when I'm saying if you have an original Sony lens and you use another lens, you will see immediately the color shift. And when, sure. whenever you're post-processing or if you want to put it in an album, you would actually see the difference immediately. So I suggest just go, go for, the, for the 2.8. The F4 is actually fantastic. The 100 to, four, to 400 is nice. The 200 to 600 is fantastic also. So yeah, there we go. Mark, you have any questions for the you? Pahabal daw. Just a beam split. Uh, paano nyo na lalaman yung angle yung or on uh, oh. trial and error ba okay. yung sub yung speed? When, how do you find the proper angle? That is highly debatable. If you guys, you want to tune in to another episode of our Nightcap, Nigel, I think we're going to be tackling that, but it's this simple. <laughs> we're, we're all photographers, correct? And we are supposed to be trained yes. to see beauty, right? So the best way to see it without any, any technical knowledge, make her face to the right, make her face to the left. You look at it, pinpoint what, you, what angle do you think is more beautiful? Because you always have to depend on your eye. And then if you want, ask her then afterwards. You go, oh, pag nagpapa picture ka, where do, you, where do you look? More often than not, they'll tell you which angle they're gonna be looking at. But honestly, as photographers, we should always trust our eye and know what side is beautiful just by seeing it. Okay, Mel. Yeah, okay. Yes, my question lang, pahabol. Using one light, can we fix gradient in the background? Kasi minsan di yata nagpapantay. Using one light, oh. can we fix gradient in the background? Um, I'm sorry, I don't, yes. I don't get the question. The reason why you are getting great. Are you purposely putting gradient in the background? No, take it out. Yeah, but I you think. already saw the picture that I took. There was no gradient. Yes. So it's okay. a matter of how to how to properly position your light and how to properly manipulate the power of your light using one light. So let's say, for example, if I still want it to be more <laughs> white in the background. What can I do with this particular modifier? 
what could I do? What? I could put one more modifier over it to diffuse the light even more, therefore making it weaker. So if I make it weaker, the ratio of the background and the, sub and the, and the light falling on my subject will increase again. So if this one right now, let's say, off the top of my head is 1 is to 2, or 1 is to 4, then, wait, nalito talaga because I don't think in ratios. But let's say, for example, <laughs> the light falling on my subject now is, a, is at um, 1 half power, and the one in the back is at full power, basically. That's what's happening, right? Um, because I am diffusing mm -hmm. the light in front, and the background is getting the full power of my flash. If I put another diffuser in this one, then I will reduce the power hitting the subject into one fourth. So therefore, the difference between one fourth and one and one full stop and one and full power in the back, you make the background even whiter or brighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed it and. Thank you for, for taking the time off today um, to be this panel here. And I hope your respective communities enjoy this workshop that we're doing for them. And uh, I guess, Nigel, we still have some parting words, the two of us. Yeah, first of all, thanks, Mel. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Dino, for spending your thank Sunday you. evening with From us. Smug. From Smug. Thank, thank you very you. much, thank guys. Thank you very much. Let's, let's do this again. Actually, I, as you were discussing jigs, there are, there are some questions on your on your public uh, page, and our friend uh, Dominic is as is answering them on your behalf, and he's right. Thanks, Dom. Because basically, we, we cannot answer uh, everything <laughs> right now, but we're very glad Thanks, that Dom. people are asking both both on uh, the technique and the flash units that uh, we are uh, you are using right now. So, Dom's thank you uh, thank you very much for <laughs> for filling in. So, yeah, I cannot answer. Jiggy cannot answer because we're focused on on so, the broadcast. Nice. So, what do you think? Did I can finally breathe? I'm I'm sorry. I'm normally better at explaining things like this, but it's just different being the technical person and being the speaker at the same time. But I think this was uh, I I truly enjoyed this type of workshop. Did you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And this is the only first of the many Sony Alpha digital learning program in the next following week. So don't forget, we have the promos and uh, we have the extended warranties. So uh, uh, check out Sony Philippines Facebook page. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to yeah, Jiggy, sure. of course. Yeah. That's his oh, Instagram there, there, over there. there, 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 there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and you can check out more of my Jiggy tutorials Alejandrina. on YouTube. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, it's Jiggy Alejandrino. Just search me on YouTube. I have a lot of these um, lighting tutorials there and some gear reviews also from Sony. Yeah, all right. Okay. So on behalf of the Sony Alpha Philippines family uh, and Jiggy Alejandrino, my name is Nigel Ian Laksamana, hosting you on the first ever Sony Alpha digital learning program. Until next time, guys, I'll see you. Bye-bye.